What's going on guys? Um, I'm going to do a bit of a tutorial today on um, some home kit hacking. Um, so I wasn't aware of this, but apparently you can have an alarm system with less than three states. Um, every alarm system I've ever dealt with in home kit has always had all of these buttons on it. So if I click on this, for example, I've got a home away night and off. Um, and it's always kind of annoyed me. Um, I've wanted to be able to strip things out when I'm when I'm sending things to it from ho home assistant. Um, so it, it transpires that you can do it. Um, so that is essentially the same camera, um, but with two states just armed and disarmed. So if you're using custom alarm systems, this one's for you. Um, I'm gonna head over to home assistant now, I'll show you. I'm just gonna delete a couple of automations and then show you how I did them. Um, so I'll head over to, we'll start with the YAML. Dead simple, I'll paste it in the description below um, and I'll run you through exactly what it's all doing um, while we're doing it. Um, and then we're just gonna link everything up with automation. So this could be like if you were using a load of motion sensors like, I don't know, acquire motion sensors and you were to create a custom alarm system using those motion sensors. Um, you could you could do this with 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 this little bit of yaml um so we'll get into the studio code section and the configuration um it's the bit here where it starts with alarm control panel so the first section is the manual control panel now a manual control panel can only have four states so if you pass a manual control panel which is the way i've always been doing it to home kit you end up with those uh, different arming modes and you don't necessarily always want them so how I've done this today is we've got a manual alarm system um, which you know in turn fires off and arms and disarms things and um, and sends requests but that's a ghost system that just sits in the background and then we've got sort of an overlay on top of that that links that states with it that then we can strip this we can strip different arming modes out of so the first section is the manual alarm control panel which i've named front camera ghost because the thing that i'm arming and disarming in this is my cctv camera it's got like sirens and, and flashing lights on it and stuff if if it's armed and you walk in front of it um so then code alarm required is false for me because i don't want to put a code in and if you're doing it from home kit you certainly don't want to put a code in because it won't arm um, then you've got your arming time, that's purely the amount of time it takes for the, that alarm system to settle before it's armed. Um, you can manipulate that number. Um, so for me, when I press arm, it's just nice for it to say arming, then armed, rather than just going straight to armed. But if you want it to do it immediately, just press zero. Um, delay time, I've got set to zero. Trigger time is set to 60. Um, disarmed, trigger time is zero. Armed away, arming time is zero. So um that is my configuration feel free to tweak those thresholds on yours um so that basically generates um an alarm system with four states five states if you include triggered um and it'll do nothing and that's great because that means we can link it with automations um then below that i've then got a template alarm system um now, a template alarm system allows you to link the state of the template with a d another alarm system and then strip different things out of it. So the first thing we've got is the value template and that is linking its state, this new alarm system with only two states, or three if you include trigger, um, to the one above it, the ghost system. Then I've got armed away, which is calling the service our alarm away, which is arming the one above it again the go system and then i've got the disarm service which is uh alarm disarm which again um just disarms the the manual so out of the box this does absolutely nothing but if you pass the first alarm entity to home kit you'll get four states if you pass the second alarm entity to home kit you'll get two states um so that's it and then all we have to do once we've got that into HomeKit, uh, I'll show you how to share that into HomeKit in a bit, um, is linked with them with automation. So for my situation, I'm just arming disarming a camera and that's exposed to Home Assistant in my case as a switch. You might want to do it in a different way. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs on that one. So I'm just going to create three automations, arm, disarm and trigger. Um, and these are going to 
um, be dependent on the state of the ghost alarm system, if you will. Apart from the trigger, because we want to trigger the one that we've actually passed to home kit so we get critical alerts. So um, to disarm, for me, it's going to be um, when ghost goes to armed, um, which is actually off the screen, armed away. Um, my action is going to be call service and it's going to be switch turn off because there's a switch for some reason it's inverted and it's called disarming so when it's on it's disarmed so I'm going to turn off that when that alarm system's armed away so I'm going to call this CCTV arming and then I'm going to create another one um, which is, again is a state trigger for disarming so that's alarm and that camera this is the one that we're passing to home kit the two state one whatever you named it in the YAML um, to disarmed and then the action for that is going to be call service switch turn on um, disarming so that's going to turn on the disarming from my front camera and then so that's CCTV disarm um, sorry, I didn't put I put the wrong um, state trigger there because I wanted to be doing it on the um, the go. So when ghost sets to disarm, and then I'm going to create one final trigger for triggered. Um, so in my sense. It's going to be if someone walks in front of that camera during the arming period. Interesting to know, you can't trigger an alarm when it's disarmed, so you don't have to put any um, any conditions in it. Um, so I'm going to put state, and then I'm going to put cross, because I know my entity's got a cross-line alarm. Basically, if someone walks in front of that camera, it creates a cross-line alarm. Um, and then all I'm going to do there is call the service of alarm system trigger, um, and then the entity is going to be the, the one that we're actually passing to HomeKit, not the ghost, uh, because we want those critical alerts in HomeKit. So that is it. That's all linked. So this is CCTV trigger alarm system. So that's the three states linked. Um, when I um, Now when I look in my HomeKit, this is the one that we've passed with two states. And you'll notice if I arm that, hopefully, it might not be very happy because I've only just written these automation. <laughs> so um, I worked out where it had gone wrong there. Um, if I go back to home, if I open the home app, I'll just show you what is going on here so originally I had this bridged through home bridge um, not through home assistant um, and I was waiting for them two to link up and that's not gonna work so um, what I've just done is I've flipped over to um, this and I'm gonna send this is where you would um, send things through to HomeKit. So I've got an include, I'm using include mode, so I only take the things I want to include because I've got quite a lot of sensors and stuff I don't want to include. Um, so I'm sending the alarm control panel and the binary sensors from the alarm systems and stuff. So I'm going to tick front camera ghost and reload that so it'll f fire them both through so I can show you them side by side in Home Assistant. Um, the original one where I was going to show you before um, is no longer working because it was on Homebridge before I've upgraded it all through Home Assistant. So um, I'm going to bridge both across, send them down to HomeKit, and I can show you them side by side uh, and why we're not going to send Ghost there, obviously. So I press Submit, Finish, and then I'm going to reload that automation, and then that's going to push that extra um, new alarm system that we don't actually want in HomeKit over to HomeKit so I can show you the differences. Um, so that might take a little while, but we'll, uh, we'll load it up and see. So if I go to the Home app over here so you can see now I've got two alarm systems here I've got the ghost one which is the one that we that is the thing running in the background 
and that has the four states. Um, but obviously, with it just being I'm in a disarming one entity, uh, I don't need those four states. So this is the actual front camera one that we created using the template YAML at the bottom, and that has two states. Now you can see when I arm this one, what will happen is the other one will be set to away as well, and then when I disarm this one, the other one will be set to um, disarmed as well. So they both happen concurrently. Um, but this is the important bit where you have to trigger the one that you're actually sending down to HomeKit, not the ghost one, because otherwise you won't get the critical alerts when something goes wrong. Um, so I'm just going to unshare that because I don't want the two in, in HomeKit. But essentially, that's it. Um, dead easy to get rid of some of those states. Um, I'm going to unshare that, submit it, and just reload that automation to make it disappear from HomeKit. Um, so hopefully, you should be a bit more versed in in custom alarm systems for HomeKit now using Home Assistant. Um, obviously, there's no limit to that. You can you can use the template thing to group all sorts of other alarm systems with automations. So you could have one that arms everything. You could call it whole site that um, and pass that down to HomeKit that arms your house alarm, your cameras, you know, the, the garage alarm if you've got a third third alarm system. And you can have like one local entity with two states that arms and disarms everything. So it's quite a powerful bit of kit, um, that little bit of YAML. Again, I'll, I'll paste it in the description below for anyone that wants to experiment, but they're, um, yeah, good bit of code. <laughs> uh, cheers, guys. I'll see you soon.